We've played this once, we're going to play it again. Uh, playing Rakdos mid-range, it's got Dark Confidants and Magmatic Channelers here for those that are just joining us. A few Blood Moons as well. Liliana has been pretty good and Crocs has been pretty fun. We're not gonna go so heavy on the Dragon's Claws here. I kind of want one of Anger of the Gods in here as well. So let's go ahead and add one of those instead of the Necromentia. I'm not feeling the Necromentia has, has been very important. Um, but we're going to keep three Dragon's Claws, because if we go too far in boarding things out, we'll end up running into some problems here. Uh, one thing I could see possibly is a Cleansing Wildfire, because we ran into Tron a bunch, but we're going to just go with what we've got here. Okay, commands here for the artifacts. A lot of Dread Boar and uh, Lightning Bolt and Fatal Pushes for all those creatures. What was it? Andres Peterson played the list and had a... Hazard and a Chandra initially, and we've actually brought in some Dark Confidants and some Channelers to give it a try. With that, gonna get going here. Grace, do you want me to review that now or later? Or do you want me just to see it? I don't want to feel the rune in the main. The mana base is too tight. How about I chat to you after about this this list you've posted? If the stream doesn't go too long, we'll chat after. Incoming burn prowess burn league, exactly. I drop one dragon's claw, here they all come. Although, putting an anger in the here for one dragon's claw and one Relic for Necromentia or vice versa is probably not a bad thing. Let's see if we can do better than our 2-3. I think we will. Got a little bit better understanding of the list. You know what? Let's stand. Stand and get on my surfboard. Woo! My head gets cut off a little bit. You're just going to have to deal with it. I like my surfboard. All right, we're double zero. My opponent is 2-2. Two, two. I can, like, scoot down, but I, I like it. I'm jealous of your standing setup, and I have a surfboard. I do not surf. Sorry, it's called a motion board. Well, this hand's interesting. It is a motion board. It looks like this, uh, technically like this. And you can rock. So you can see, you can rock back and forth and you can see I'm, I can rock back and forth. Anyway. Uh, let's keep this hand. This will be fun. Thoughtsies, Thoughtsies, Fatal Push, Dark Confidant. Yeah, my wife got a, um, a desk from the company that my desk is from. Because we did some work from home and all. And when she got it, when I got it, I got certain, like, freebies with it. I got, like, a desk organizer. I got these sound things that are garbage. And some other stuff. And she, they gave her the option of two of these balance boards. And I was like. She got me one. All right. Do we bolt the bird or do we move on to an Inquisition or a, or a Thought Seize? Bolt that bird. That's like a fidget cube to the extreme, sort of. Oh gosh, Wall of Omens and a Stomping Ground? We know where this is going. We know where this is going. Let's Thought Seize twice here. Holy Toledo. Get out of here with Soul Formation. Do I care about the Tension Sphere? Oh my gosh. Varos is here.
I'm going to give him the detention sphere. I don't care. How's it going, Evan? What's going on? 36 months. That's three years. Oh my gosh. That is insane. Oh man. What a draw. What an absolute draw. Give it up for Evan. If you haven't checked out Evan's stream, you should. How was your stream today? I saw you started streaming. Hopefully it went well. The internet was holding out okay. Got the things tested out. The very first standard deck back in 2015 was Assault Formation. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're gonna we're going crazy here, everybody. Yes. Double Dark Confidant. Let's go. It was really pleasant. Helped me feel a bit more at home. Feel at home. Land Season Pyromancer. Let's play a Season Pyromancer. Kind of want a thought seize here. I kind of want a thought seize. Opponent gains some life here. What does that do for you? What does that do for you? Thirty six. Howls from Zale, you got him in there. It's quite a quite a few. All right, so what is my opponent's combo here? Gilded Goose. We saw Naya to potentially four colors there. Are we gonna do Vanifar? Yeah, they don't want to show what they had. This is why I'm questioning what do I bring in here. You like this, uh, Evan? It's a good, good list. It's a good list. All right, I'm going to bring in Blood Moons and Ashok here. I'm not going to try to overboard. I could play Anger the Gods, but I have a feeling my opponent just combos out when they're ready to kill me. This looks like a great hand here. We'll keep. We've got the Bolt for the Bird. We've got the Blood Moon. Got it all. Got it all. We start with the Bolt. We then Inquisition. We then Blood Moon. We then Ashiok. These are the ways. My foot. Wall of Omens. That's a draw. All right. Voice of Resurgence. An Eternal Witness. We have a Breeding Pool. We have a Charming Prince as well. Voice is kind of a pain to kill. So we'll get rid of the voice. Yes, Idyllic Tutor would do it. There you go. Wall. Breeding pool. Go ahead and get our swamp. We'll get a, another swamp. And we'll play Blood Moon. Luckily for us, they don't have anything that attacks me yet. Charming Prince is going to show up here. Charming Prince ETB. At this point, I could probably just play Channeler here. Channeler's not going to grow any, necessarily. But Channeler will hopefully filter through our cards. We've got a couple lands here that are pretty useless. And hopefully with that, fingers crossed, we'll be able to get 
to a win condition. That's not a bad card here. Let's go ahead and loot away a Bloodstained Mire. I like a Croxa here. Croxa's not a bad one. And we're going to just hold up the Fatal Push right now, feeling pretty confident that we're good. Maybe they'll get a path. Oh my gosh, my opponent has a Blood Moon. Why do you have a Blood Moon? No. Path it. Oh my gosh, what are they doing? We're playing Croxa here. I don't know what they're doing. Croxa make them discard here. Not going to play a land. Pass the turn. Four color with Blood Moon. Yep. My opponent's going crazy here. And it's not a Magus either. That's that's kind of the crazy thing to me. It's not like a Magus of the Moon that they're going to like evolution out. Let's play this Liliana. Let's play this Magmatic Channeler. Let's uh swing, 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 swing. Swing, 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 swing. All right. That worked. Guess we've gone back to the Astrolabe levels of deck construction. That's why Blood Moon still is pretty good and why maybe Red Prison needs to get away from some of the ritual effects. And if they get away from some of the ritual effects, it's possible that we just fill the list with a little bit more meat. If we fill it with a little bit more meat, maybe we can compete with some of these lists. We have to find what that balance is. All right, we're 1-0. My opponent's 1-0. That's good. Hand's all right. I think we can keep this hand. Take a peek. Shoot a bird. Win the game. Boop. Boop. Let's see what we're working against. Just give modern ancient tomb. <laughs> Man, everyone keeps suggesting that stuff. You people are insane. Whoa. Look at this hand. Um. Yeah. All right, we found prowess. Let's see if we can make it something here. My opponent opts. The scry goes to the bottom. Fresh card here. Two cards we don't know about. One mountain played. One mana more posts. Guess I'm gonna be dread boring or bolting. I kind of want to bolt this. But if they prowess trigger it, I'm gonna be real sad. But I think this is what I've got to try for. Scalding turn here. They play a spell, then play a new Stormwing. I get to dread bore it. I am F6. This is incorrect. I un F6 here briefly. I'm going to Fatal Push. Get it out of here. They could Vapor Snag their own creature here to save it. And they do. I like it. All right. Let's go ahead and Thought Seize something away here. <laughs> Just this, because this is easier to kill. This is maybe easier to kill with a Dread Boar right after it. Let's get rid of Sprite Dragon. Bolt me, play Stormwing. Go for it. Soulscar. Eh, Swiss Spear. That was a creature. <laughs> that was a creature. All right. Well, I kind of hate doing this, but let's just take it. We can chum block these guys for days. Rather not have a random 3-3 that I have to randomly dread bore. Now I can focus the dread bore here. Opt's a pretty good card to start things off with. K 
Keep in mind that we've missed land drops for three turns. That's not good. That's not good. Expressive iteration. My opponent's going to hit us for six, going to nine. Spire Bluff Canal in and a random card to hand. Oh my gosh. Kill something here past the turn. I would rather do this than play Channeler. Channeler could get, uh, well, Channeler is a good blocker right now, but Channeler could get Vapor Snagged, and that wouldn't be very good. I'd rather have a bunch of blockers with the Season Pyromancers. Land drop here, swing for two, down to seven, land. All right. Fortunately, I will go to six here. We do have a mountain, though, but a couple season pyromancer tokens, not a bad idea. No pass the turn. All right, we're at six. My opponent's at 13. What does this mean for us? <laughs> That's hilarious. Why would I ever play this card? Dark Confidant here to get them to discard a card. Discards a Scalding Tarn. We'll play a Channeler here. And I'm going to attack for two. Swing. Make this game a close game. Let's go. <laughs> Dark Confidant. <laughs> it's hilarious. Did they attack me? No, never. It's just got to be Croxa, right? Two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Leave four in here. Channeler's good. Deal three. Attack with this. It's a must block. Attack with this. They'd have to block one or the other. They lose one. Attack with both of these. If I do that, they have to block two things here. And it can't be the elementals. I mean, I guess I could take both elementals here and then block the 4-4. That seems very risky. You're playing with a Rubik's Cube? All right, so we have a Swift Spear pair to beat. Holds on the Soul Scar Mage, probably not a bad one to hold on to. We take them the three. I'm feeling fairly confident that I kill them here. Even if they have a Bolt, we've got obviously Croxa. We will be blocking, obviously. Do I do a Lava Dart? I might. Bolt. I go to one. <laughs> Close one. <laughs> this timer's still going. <laughs> All right, taking game one here is pretty good. Let's grab some Dragon's Claws. Cause looks to turn in potentially this anger as well. To me, the thought seasons make little to no sense, as do dark confidants. We'll take one extra dark confidant out and leave the thought seize. Blood moons aren't very good here. We can probably still play a thought seize and maybe 1k commands. Let's do it. Someone mentioned fidget things earlier, and I remember I had a cube sitting in your desk drawer. Nice. Uh, all my cubes are at my office, so they've been sitting there for a while. Your Rubik's Cube game is pretty consistent at a minute 30. Nice. Mine's about there. I think I could get it to right around one minute, and that's just going as fast as possible, but not really knowing the algorithms. I have a cube that's specially uh, lubricated and stuff so that it moves really fast. But yeah, anywhere sub two minutes is, is moving pretty fast. It's really good. 
You always wanted the fidget cube? You can get lots of them online. I have one. It's sitting over there. It's not the, like, original one. Ours has a little dial on it, little spinning things, clicking buttons. I literally bought it, and I've never used it. Why? Because I fidget. I just fidget. All right, I'm going to keep a one-lander. Everyone else is going to be like, oh, Fluffy, you're throwing away the 5-0. This is actually a fairly good one-lander here with two removal spells and an Inquisition. And I have probably about three draws before we're in trouble. Right on, right, right on time. Let's Fatal Push pass turn. You just won the two lands for four turns in a row. Easy peasy. <laughs> Ah, extra creature there. Getting us a little bit. And it'll be alright. So an Inquisition here. Um, guess I'll take Sprite Dragon. Can I deal with another creature here? I don't want to take Expressive. Sprite Dragon would be hard to kill if it gets too big. Yeah, Sprite Dragon's probably the scarier card here. I'm just going to pass turn like I have nothing. Risk the Vapor Snag here for my opponents to go in on these a little bit more. All right. That's enough going in on it. Goodbye, Swiss Beer. Energize, what's up? How's it going? Love to play this season Pyromancer. Extra Soul Scar Mage here and the land. That's pretty good. All right. Well, Season Pyromancer it is. I'm going to hold on to the Channeler. It's just a little bit better. Those are excellent cards to draw here. Might not even block. Who knows? Is it should play Noxious Revival? Occasionally you will see it. There's a Sprite Dragon in the air. We got a Lava Dart that could punch away some elementals here. AJV, thank you for the raid. Welcome. How's everyone going? Lava Dart's a token here. Trigger. I am just trying to stay alive here. So Dreadbore here. Fatal push one of these creatures, more than likely. Um, the fact that I'm getting to block both of these is super nice. Taking only two here. Cast of the Lava Dart so we don't know what else they have in hand. Could get rid of the last thing in hand. Not going to get that greedy. We're going to kill and kill here. I'm going to hope that they don't have one of those Storm Wings in hand and top deck of Manamorphos. That looks good. Is it not better to kill the Mage because of its ability? Maybe. Maybe. Who knows, really? I don't think it would really matter. <laughs> I don't think it mattered. We're going to work our way back up to Croxa here. I'm going to hold Lightning Bolt open. There's an Abrade. That would have gotten rid of Channeler. Thank goodness we didn't do that. We'll play Channeler here. Risk it to a Bolt or something. 
going to hold bolts as long as I need to here. Creatures are the priority still. Look like I need a Pop-Tart. I'm not eating as many Pop-Tarts anymore. Not as many Pop-Tarts. We're not doing it anymore. One, two, three. Tap land here to give Crocs some mana, but we're not quite there. Need another spell in the graveyard. Gonna hold bolts. And let's go ahead and bolt. <laughs> Awkward card after bolt. Dragon's Claw in play here. My opponent's got... A lot of, lot of mana here. You get a Season Pyromancer off the top. That's that's kind of nice. Gonna start gaining some mana or some life. See what's going on? Well, it's kind of being quiet over there. Uh, a lot of people will board in a braid against me. Because I am known for playing prison online. We have a Coslix return, a lightning bolt, and a vapor snag. Interesting. Um I'll take the vapor snag because it actually makes Croxa awkward. And now if they go ahead and bolt this or do anything with this, I gain life. So I'll take it. Some people do. Not saying everyone does, but I play a lot, a lot <clears throat> of bridges. Kozlik's return here for my opponent. We do know about the Bedlam. We do know about the Bolt. Bolt's me. We take two. This is enough for Bedlam, I believe, now. Yep. Discards that last card, draws a few. Land drop plus soul guide lantern. I'll pass the turn. But do I know why kids love the taste of cinnamon toast crunch? I actually do have that answer. I was, as a little boy, trusted with that knowledge. Because <laughs> the cinnamon. Kind of want to bolt here. Like, I know if I get another one, it'd be nice to be able to hit the Bedlam Reveler. But at the same time, taking them to eight and gaining that life, that seems good. Play a channeler here, gain some more. Pass turn. Again, rather gain life here and get the channeler in play is kind of nice. It's a 4 4 currently. They can make it a 1 3 again if they'd like. My opponent cycles here. Interesting choice. Instead of getting rid of the graveyard, I now have a solid 4 4. I'm going to no block here because actually attacking back or digging here probably is smarter than simply trying to block and them doing something that ends our little lives. I'm going to play the land here and I'm going to just uh, smack them for four past turn. We can get a Season Pyromancer set of tokens here. So this is why I'm doing this. My opponent seems to be slightly flooding out here. Uh, if they get Lava Dart, they can kill quite a few of those. But our Dragon's Claws are going to be offsetting the Bedlam Reveler's prowess triggers. So this feels like the safest line. If my opponent plays a Soul Guide Lantern or anything, I'll obviously fetch and go get the Season Pyromancer tokens here. Here comes Bedlam. And 
And we will chump block here. I don't think they have anything that would give this trample. This feels safe. So here we go. Lava Dart, gain two. They're going to just do this again. And then I attack with a 4-4 and they have to have exactly Vapor Snag because it's a 4-4. So I gain all that. They hit me for five and put me back to eight. I would assume it has to be Vapor Snag, but I guess they have two things here. Oh, Stormwing. All right, Stormwing's not bad. Does block. I can attack. Threatening lethal. Top deck removal? No top deck removal. I cannot get two spells that win here, so I'm just going to attack. There's no lava dart down here, so I feel pretty safe in the attack, and they're forced to block. Any prowess triggers are undone by the dragon's claws. Ooh, mutagenic's pretty good. Mutagenic's pretty good. That might kill me. Am I going to two? We got got. I'm at two. They play a land. Top deck. Do we flinch first? They think I have something here. I mean, I have to, right? I have to just go for it and hope they don't have a bolt. <laughs> if they have in response, we lose. Well, now we don't lose. GG's. It was ripped off the top. Very close game here. Dragon's Claw is coming in clutch, especially the second one. We don't need four. Looks like three was okay here. And we do take down Prowess. It's good 2-0 so far. Bolt wouldn't kill me anyway. If my opponent thinks that I have a Bolt here, uh, or a red spell of some sort, let's not say Bolt, let's say a red spell. I attempt to gain two, and if they have an instant speed response, they could try to respond, right? No, this would interact. Hold on. I'm probably thinking Eidolon math. Hold on. If they were to bolt me in response, I would gain it because of the Dragon's Claws. Yeah, yeah, we're, you're right. Shouldn't lose. You're right. Brain's a little confuzzled. We're good. Yeah, a non-red spell. Opt. Not Vapor Snag. Uh, they could try... Let's see here. If they would have bolted me, it would have done... That would have been offset. Bolt would have worked, right? No. I don't know. It was a good game. A lot of math problems there. A lot of them... Mathy problems. Let them think things. We're doing better. We're standing. Blood's flowing. We're thinking. I died at any spell due to double prowess? Probably. During combat, if they had it. Termagurf is our opponent. We're going to keep a hand with a fatal push and a bolt. Of course you keep this kind of hand against them. They're Termagurf. Termagurf says hello to you all. We're going to keep. Looked like simple math to me. Life total equals plus bolt equals trophy. <laughs> Triome here. So we have the counter version of Luris. So we're going to have to deal with many, many counter spells. This will be frustrating. We'll lead with Magmatic Channeler. We may be a slight underdog in this list. We will find out together. 
Last spell I'll attempt to resolve here is a Dark Confidant. The reason it'll be the last spell is because they'll have removals and counter spells, which I need to work through. By the way, there's a Fatal Push Frog Zombie. Uh, we're going to go again here with the Channeler. Enjoy life without Counterspell for another few weeks. I'd rather see Counterspell than a lot of other spells that I see. <laughs> Aethergust. <laughs> Snapcaster. I will push you, and you push me. I'm gonna push each other. Hooray! All right, do we think we play Liliana or go for Dark Confidant? It's time to play something that has a bigger impact on the board. Oh, they missed a land drop. Well, that answers it. Dark Confidant number one, Dark Confidant number two. Here we come. Mana leak, can't pay. In we go again. Don't kill it. Don't kill it. He's our best friend. Yeah, give me the turn back. Trigger. Bolt and Thought Seize. Let's take a peek. What's going on? Oh my gosh. All this wrecks me. Okay, so. I guess to take the Logic Knot, let them Mana Leak, or Force. Could also just wait on the Liliana. Maybe I just take the Bring the Light. Yeah, let's just take the Bring the Light. Here. Counter this. <laughs> just counter it. You're good to go. Force it. Mana leak works too. In for two. Pass turn. Whoosh. Send it. Bobble. Bobble was the top deck. We know the hand. Logic and force. Luris to hand. Thinking about a Valky to take a peek at the hand. Worried about what we might play. Bobble. Bob trigger. We'll go ahead and Inquisition. They do find a land, finally. I don't care about Valky, do I? We'll just take that. In for two, pass turn. Sort of wondering if I should uh, save a bolt for Luris. Gaining that life would be really detrimental. It's Valky. I kind of want to shoot Valky now because Valky's going to get in the way of Dark Confidant. Excuse me. All right, we have Force and we have some unknown card over there. Dark Confidant trigger. I'll Inquisition ya. I'm gonna let them have the Force of Negation for a little bit. Cause why not? It'll be fun. They can put Lars to hand, then I get to steal it. Ooh. Now Thoughtseize looks even better. They drew some cards. Sunken Hollow here. And a Abrupt Decay. Ooh. Fine. Fine. We understand. Blood Moon, go. <laughs> nice Blood Moon off the top. Force of Negation out of here. Polluted Delta in play. My opponent has double blue. We have a bolt. Looking for creatures to finish this game up. We'll hold the Bloodstained Mire here. 
extra land for our opponent. We get a Liliana. We get to go upticking here. Uptick. Get rid of Bloodstained. We are in the driver's seat. Let's go. Extra land for our opponent. New Liliana. Forget it. Get out of here, Liliana. We're going to an ultimate soon, Termagurf. Soon. You know what we're separating? All of these lands and islands. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Lurus to hand. Up tick we go. Fatal push out of hand. They discard a Lyris. We're going to go up tick one more time, probably here. You bet we're going to go up tick one more time here. We'll be playing that Croxa. That worked. That was nice. That was good. Huh. Varum Varum to victory. Clutch moon. It was a pretty clutch moon. Hmm. It is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. It's it's a good solid just mid-range. I don't have to worry too too much about my mana base. We've made some mistakes, but we're learning. Um, I like the additions of the Dark Confidants instead of the Hazret and the Chandra. Got to be a little bit careful about your life total, obviously. It's what you sign up for. But yeah, it's doing its thing. I almost want to just send it back. I think we can beat them. They're probably going to bring something in for the graveyard, which makes me a little bit nervous. It is a bit like Mardu Pyromancer. It, 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 it very much is. You know what? My opponent does search with Bring to Light. We can play an Ashiok or two over maybe the Fatal Pushes. That actually doesn't seem too bad. Angraph Flame Chain? Isn't that five mana? Is that the five mana Angraph? Keep this. A little triome for our opponent. Start with a good old Inquisition. Guess I'll take that logic knot. Nice opt. We're going to get one more check here before we, uh, you know, blood moon him. Inquisition again, see if I can steal that opt. Opponent decides opting is the right plan here. Uh, the fact that we dropped two four drops to lower the curve, I wouldn't suggest anything else. Wow. That's a, that's a big miss. <laughs> that's a miss. Misty Rainforest. We're slam. By the way, we're gonna we're gonna slam this Blood Moon. They've got the counter, they've got it, because they just picked it up. We'll find out together. To the top of the library, give them what they needed. Or is Blood Moon enough? No! Actually, they're, they're probably just fetching for blue. <laughs> I panicked for a second. No! Oh, drown in the lock. If I would have not fetched twice, but I all that's all I have is fetch lands. <laughs> that's all I have. There's another misty rainforest. Well, who's ready for a Valky? Who's ready for good old Valky here? Or shall we say, Hibbolt?
Three colors. That's all I need. All right, I do have dread boars in the list, so we could run into a dread boar here and we could run into like a pair of them, possibly. Mana leak and a lightning bolt. The dark confidant. So I guess I'll play, I'll play the Roxa because the mana leak and the bolt means I would lose the Dark Confidant anyway. And this way I can make them discard a card. They'll discard the Watery Grave. The counter's not that scary. Cliffs and an Archmage Charm. The Archmage Charm's a bit annoying. I'll help you out there. <laughs> we'll, we'll help you out. They have mana leak still. All right. Let's start with the Dark Confidant. This might get the mana leak that they've played. It did not, because my opponent big brain. Season Pyromancer. This might get the mana leak. It does. And fetch and pass turn here. Bolts as well. I don't know if we have too much of an out here. They have exactly bring to light in hand, and they've got this Tybalt that they can exile all cards, add some mana, and do some crazy things. So I think I'm going to hit the concede button. Probably okay to concede there. We're not going to beat our own Croxas doing damage season pyromancers, all their counter spells. It's just not going to happen. So we didn't bring this in initially. Maybe it's just smarter to do this, like Necromantia. Just be like, yeah. Just name Valky. Let's just do it. Blood Moon looks excessively powerful against them, and I think I want these in over Fatal Pushes. So let's do that. All right. Steal things, Blood Moons, Necromantia. Win game, right? Easy. Easy. What do I think about Counterspell in Modern? It's about time. Should be here, and it's not going to be as big of a problem as people think. I'm so tired of Aether Gust. I'm so tired of Romand and stuff like that. Just counter my spell and let's move on. That's my opinion. Oh, we'll keep this hand. <laughs> Simple keeps. I can even get a Blood Moon down, avoiding a... Um, I can avoid a Drown the Lock with this hand, which is really nice. But yeah, I don't think Counterspell is going to be, shall we say, that problematic. All right, so we have an Island, a Misty. I see a Fatal Push, an Abrupt Decay, and an Opt. I'm going to take the, take the Opt from them. All right, now we have a Thought Seize. Now I'm not going to play around Drown the Lock because I just didn't see a reason to worry about it. A couple Bring the Lights, an Abrupt Decay, and an extra Misty Rainforest. We'll now take the Abrupt Decay here since they're able to fetch and in response float mana for Blood Moon. All right, here we go again. If they miss here, we land a Blood Moon. That is a miss, but they do get a draw. 
looked at the top of their library and put a Misty. They took a new draw, so it's a brand new card. We have no idea what it is. Good luck, opponent. This decides the game, probably. We'll go get an extra black source here. If the Blood Moon resolves, black is harder for us to obtain. Blood Moon. Opting, looking for force. Zalms. Extra island, though. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's we'll start with the Croxa, because it's the only thing we can play. Croxa in. Discard opponent. BTL is out of here. Polluted Delta. Silence played. Lurus is now in hand. I could name Lurus with this. I don't need to, though. I could name Cryptic Command, probably one of the ways they can get out of the Blood Moon. But I think I just named Valky at this point. I don't see a reason to worry about anything but Big Tybalt. All right, so taking a peek here. Basics, we have two more islands and a swamp. So we don't have the green. We do have cryptic commands. So they're going to need one of these two more islands. They do have Aether Gust here, so we'll be aware of that going forward. We have a Drown in the Lock in Hand and a Lurus. Cool. I think we can beat them as long as they don't find that extra island. Aether Gust is a problem. There's our red source. This allows us to play Season Pyromancer, get some tokens out there. We'll be playing Crocs the next turn, and from the Crocs the next turn, I think we can win. Bobble off the top, that means the draw is delayed for them. One, two, three, four, five. We'll leave the other Crocs are there just in case things get chaotic here. Opponent ditches A. Bring to light. We attack for four and pass the turn, hoping no Aether Gust at end step. Snapcaster for an opt. Totally fine. Op puts a card on the bottom. My opponent's digging for those extra islands. Snapcaster, number two here. Going to probably opt again and continue to dig. Opt digging here. Tops the card. We're going to swing with the team. We got to do the damage somehow. My opponent discards another Bring to Light. We are going to chump block an elemental, chump block an elemental, and take a bunch. I'm going to go ahead and put Channeler down here as a way to dig next turn to find some response to whatever they put on top. We do Aether Gust. They do do this with the two islands. I'm going to put this card on top to threaten playing it again. Fatal Pushing Channeler, totally fine with us. What is most interesting here is I am currently presenting Lethal, so I don't know if they're going to really be able to do much here. Fatal Pushes this Croxa. At this point, I will probably go ahead and fetch because the Blood Moon just doesn't, doesn't matter, probably. The Blood Moon would stop Lurus, though, so we have to decide... Is stopping Lurus worth it here? We could end up with a bolt. They could counter that. I think it's worth probably trying to stop the Lurus. So we'll just take the draw and attempt to play. And pass. Gaining that life is, is problematic for us and we're so close. I'll just go for it. We could have fetched to help Crocs out and probably should have. All right, we'll drown the lock action here.
Upstairs with the bolt? Good game. Good game. Woo! That was nice. We did have a seasoned pyromancer there. Oh, we we're gonna bring back the tokens, and then who knows what we we're gonna draw off the top. But I think Valky was our biggest problem there. And then stopping life gain seems pretty good too. Considering we could draw one or two creatures, we need to we need to make sure the Lurus doesn't show up there. They have enough islands. Obviously, Archmage Charm and Cryptic Command are both available. But we have enough that's from the graveyard that we would bring it back that they might have to counter and then bounce the bridge and or bounce the Blood Moon so that we we don't just uh, maybe kill them. They need to get that Lurus down because that's one of their beatdown plans. And considering they just lost two Snapcasters earlier, it's not very good for them. A lot of bring the lights also gotten rid of. That worked nicely. That's that's the way this list should work. Constant pressure, getting little advantages. I think that's a great example where Blood Moon can really hinder a deck if it's cheating on mana or really slow down a deck and we're just grindy. Let's grind it out. All right, we're 3-0. My opponent's 3-1. Let's play first. And looks great. Let's go ahead and keep. May not be able to get double black, but hey, oops, we can at least see what's going on. Dang, dang, all is dust and Ugin. All right, that's what we're battling. <laughs> Power plant. I'm going to go ahead and Thought Seize away the Ugin here. I don't care about the All is Dust so much. All is Dust is so far away here. Uh, Blood Moon into Season Pyromancer, Ditching, Croxa, maybe find that extra Swamp at some point. If we find the Fetch Land here off the top, that'd be super nice. All right, we have we have two cards to throw away with our season pyromancer. We're just gonna go for it here. My opponent does have a waste, so they're able to play uh, Eldrazi Trons that they they do like. We played Tower and Mine. Channeler is not a bad one. Let's get four power on the board though, and get rid of two things that are hard to cast. Land drop past turn. There's that waste. Matter reshaper. Play a channeler. I am gonna. I think I can play one more land here. And let's uh, get in for some damage. It might jump a, or jump in front of an elemental. That's fine. Three damage is okay here. Please, no reality smasher. Five mana. There's the other tower. Thought not. Steals nothing. Fine by us. They're at five mana. They have a sea gate. They're close to all his dust here. Wouldn't mind a thought seize to steal that one away. Could attack for three, choosing not to. Let's look too deeper here with a channeler. <laughs> Guess we'll play that season Pyromancer. Leave red black open for a potential kill on Thought Not Seer. We are getting rid of the season Pyromancer in hand. Oh. <laughs> Let's see what else they're working with. Cool. Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, and all is dust. Four, five, six. I have seven here. Three or six. Four, five, six. Two, two, walking ballista. Chalice on two. Chalice on two because they're afraid of Crocs, I guess. Hmm. Interesting. 
Let's go digging here. I don't want the Inquisition. I know all the cards in hand, so I'll just put a Marsh Flats into play here. What I'm going to do here is attack with everything. This way I can bolt the Thought Knots here, hopefully. Bolting the Thought Knots here gives me one extra draw. The one extra draw I'm hoping to hit a Thought Seize. If I can hit a Thought Seize here, we can steal away the All is Dust before it ruins us. Thought Seize. So I guess we're just going to get all is dusted. And then we have Ulamog coming next. I have one Blood Moon in the list. Time to get dusted. Yeah, we got dusted, all right. I see very little reason to block here. Thought seize. Okay. We're doing things. We get to take Ulamog and leave him with whatever else they have left. We attack for two, pass turn. We have two more seasoned pyromancers to reanimate back. That's all right. When it plays the waste, four mana uh, thought not. <clears throat> I'm gonna wait until end step because they now have Seagate online. They can draw another card if they'd like. Oh no, I'm taking eight. That's not good. Not a lot tokens are doing here. I'll pass the turn here because I can do another season pyromancer. I will then have enough to chump block a Thought Knot, kill this, and take three. And then I can draw... Ha! Get countered. Seagate. Redraw. Now what? Another two drop, please. <laughs> like a Mind Stone or something. Oh. <clears throat> Do you regret that chalice yet? Probably not. Probably not. All right, so really the draws probably come down to I'm needing what? I can throw five, one here, take three, need a... Fatal push into a bolt. Looks like what I need. So fatal push, thought not, bolt, mattery shaper, so I don't die. Something like that. I lost when I discard Liliana and someone for two lands. I had a Blood Moon out. I wasn't going to cast Liliana, and I only would have been able to cast Liliana as soon as they all is dusted. Not sure how that changes the game. Channeler. Alright. So. Eldrazi, huh? We did beat them in League number one. Can we do it again? Blood Moons played a role in that K commands did as well. Ch 
chat's always right. Yeah, yeah, chat, chat's always right. I want to take these fatal pushes out, but I, I recall putting like two to three bolts out and a fatal push. That's what I recall doing, so let's do that. I should, I should remove that clip. Control, control what is being said. Alright, this is going to be a risky keep. I like it though. So we'll play Channeler and go from there. <clears throat> Temple. Map. You've never made a mistake while playing Magic. Exactly, see? We have the biggest brains in here. We're all good. We're flawless. No problems here. Let's discard Croxa here to see if I can find like a Thought Caesar Inquisition. Ooh. I like that card. Let's actually go fetching here to help fuel Croxa here as well. We'll go get the mountain this time. And play Blood Moon. It's not a bad card to see there. I'll take it, I'll take it. Maybe they don't get waste here because they've got a Mind Stone and think, ha, huh, I got this fluffy dude. No, they got a waste. All right. Though if they play Mind Stone, I'll definitely be killing it. Chalice on one. Walking Ballista on one. Okay. Okay. Please move. Thank you. I think I'm just going to slam another Season Pyromancer here. Shoots me for one. Season Pyromancer. Just see what else I pick up. Fuel the graveyard for Croxa here. It's not a bad one. Attack for two past turn. If my opponent plays a Reality Smasher in two turns, we'll be fine. If they play a Thought Knots here, I can't do much about that. DKS. Nice. All right. So I do have Croxy here, I believe. One, two, three, four. We have a K command. Let's go ahead and discard the Marsh Flat so I can play Croxa. If I get a Dread Boar, maybe we play that instead. Ooh. Deck donations are 25 for Modern and 30, 30, 35 for other formats. I don't want to play this. Kind of want to play this Liliana. We were called out for not playing Liliana before, but we can actually do it this time. And this is like Liliana Downtick draw a card. I mean, this is basically better than Teferi right now. Kill draw a card instead of bounce draw a card. Woo. Oh. Getting rewarded with the second Liliana for that reality smasher coming down. Here it comes, the big one. Oh. It's Karn the Great Creator. Now we're going to get Tormodded Crypt, and I'm going to regret not having done Croxa. Here we go. Maybe it's Relic. We live around a Relic. We'd very much lose a lot of value here if it's Tormod's Crypt. Graph Digger's Cage. We can handle that one. We can handle that one. Inquisition. Well, I could play that. Let's uptick first. Get rid of Liliana. We are going to then Inquisition. Maybe I get to hit something here. I don't. Thought Not and Karn, great creator again.
four, five, six, seven, eight. That's quite a bit. Two at Karn, one at Karn, one at them, one at them, pass turn. The idea here is I'm not worrying about the cage just yet, hoping that they'll play Karn plus do something, and then I can use K command to kill. If they play Thought, not Seer, I get to kill the cage. Maybe make them discard or something like that. There's new Karn. I played this too. Right now we're relatively safe here. Let's see what they pick up. If they get a relic, that's okay. It's a bridge. All right, so this is interesting here. I can get rid of this bridge this turn. So we will do that. So we're going to destroy artifact and discard. When I play Croxa, I make them discard. When I Lilian, I make them discard. That's three discards. I throw three damage at Karn the Great Creator, and we have the biggest, the beefiest board. One, two, hold on. One, two, three, four, and if I do this, I have, what do I have in here? One, two, Let's attack first, so I can do the most damage. I don't think I quite keep everything in there that I want. So Karn for three damage into them for five. Kill Karn. Uptick Liliana. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll play Croxa from the yard now. And I believe we actually keep the channeler large enough here because I'm putting a Planeswalker and I'll use the Planeswalker for what I'm getting rid of here. Planeswalker, Planeswalker, land, land, and channeler. And that way, the channeler stays large here. Discard last card, please. Oh, did I miss a card? Oh, it's a dismember. That's fine. Now they take three here. <laughs> Go to one. You like this list? It's working out nicely. My opponent just took seven there. It's a lot of damage. All right, got to do it one more time here. One more time. Hand seems reasonable. Cyborg seems reasonable. There's a part of me that would like to Necromentia the Karn the Great Creator, but I do have two K commands. We do have a lot of stuff that can reach. You know, if my opponent starts hiding behind a bridge, I could... I don't have maybe as many bolts, but I can get there with the Croxes sometimes. A one lander here is a no go. I'm gonna mulligan this. This is a really bad six. Thoughtseize and, and fatal push plus lands. We can do better. What are lands? What are lands? What was it? One lander into five lander into no lander into one lander. All right, I'm keeping three cards here. Keep. Probability of drawing another Blood Moon. Low. 
Let's do it this way instead. That way I can shuffle the blood moon back up. We're gonna trust in Dark Confidant, shall we? Expedition map is a reason that the blood moon's like hit or miss. All right. Inquisition start. I'll take it. Cool. My opponent has natural Tron plus all's dust in Karn, the great creator. We're about to get rocked. They could just all is dust me here. They could Karn walking ballista for one and kill Dark Confidant. I have one card left and they know it's probably got to be at least a land here. Map goes and gets something. Probably should just get a waste just to be safe. And that is what they do. Power plant. Nice. Karn, the greatest of creators. Oh, yeah. If they get liquid metal coating. We're dead. <laughs> we're dead. Liquid metal coating is what they probably should get. Unfortunately, just had to mull to oblivion here. There's that walking blister. That's the other option. Walking blister on one, get rid of the dark confidant, and then worry about whatever they need to do here. Two mana into that opponent. Not three, two. Try again. Two. One, two. Click, click. Say okay. Or hit the one button. Yeah. Shoot the dark confidant. Nice. All right. Land. That's about all I could ask for. Maybe I'll get to steal something. Nope. Just a Karn, the great creator here on turn three. Liquid metal coating for my opponent here. Lock down the lands. Should be the red and black one. I am currently not showing that I have a bolt because I would have bolted the Karn at three. Opponent has us locked out here. Plays the Sundering Titan instead. Why not? Who needs liquid metal coating when you can just blow up a land anyway? I think I would have kept Moon. Well, I mean, at this point, we never draw the third land. <laughs> we never, we never drew the, the third. I'm going for it. We could, we could top deck another land and then what? Sundering Titan goes bye-bye and we lose more lands. My opponent is sporting two all's dusts. Karn goes up one. Hits me for seven. Also, this Liliana's no good now. Down ticking. We're gonna take ten here. We're we're dead. We're dead. <laughs> There's our land. One, two, three, four turns later. I had to mold to oblivion. It's really, really hard for me to keep the singleton thoughtsies fatal push hand. Uh, if we knew what our opponent was playing, uh, we could have just stolen the Karn, and then all his dust is no good against nothing. Oh, well. That puts us at three and one. We're already better than our last league, so that's a positive thing. We'll be going into our fifth and final match of the night here, trying to get a 4-1 and close the evening off with a good 6-4 with the list. That being said, if we do lose here, we've at least gone five and five on the night, and that's not a bad thing at all. It is a positive rec. Well, it, it's at least an even record achieved. Even record guaranteed, positive record possible. The Tunneling Cat, we've played this person a couple times. I believe it's Tron again, right? Tron is a bad matchup for decks like this. What? What? We got Blood Moon. What are you talking about? All right, opponent moles to six here. I want to say they're on Tron. I think that's what they're on. Not looking for Blood Moon. We only have two. So we get to try our advantage here against Blood Moon and Tron again. Not our advantage. What am I talking about? 
At least I have a Dreadbore, I suppose. Opponent has Tron, will be playing Tron, doing the Tron things. It's a lot of Tron tonight. It's a lot of Tron. Can you handle the Tron? I can't. <clears throat> Should have played some Red Prison, apparently. Tunneling Cat, by the way, is pretty good, so... It's going to take a lot to beat them. Opponent does not use Expedition Map. Has Tron naturally. Reality Smasher. Apparently, everyone is playing Eldrazi Tron and not just normal Tron. In that case, we're going to go ahead and slam Liliana down, tick the Liliana here, and get rid of the Reality Smasher. Just kidding. Warping Whale played. Opponent's got it covered. Well, that was fun. Everyone taking notes on how to brush Fluffy? Good. Little Mind Stone, little Cavern played here. Ugin making a Spirit here. Five damage, probably just at face because they don't care about Liliana anymore. No cards in hand, huh? All right, so Fatal Push, the Spirit here. Uptick, Liliana. I get that card. I get rid of that card. We then Dreadbore the Creature, pitching a Channeler. and play our land. That is as good as it's going to get here. Played against a lot of Tron. Tron's out tonight. It's doing its thing. Let's see if they want to cantrip the Mind Stone here. There we go. I can't trip the Mind Stone if I were them. Take a draw. They don't, though. Arn, the great creator, shows up here. That's a fantastic top deck. We have Boat Mana, if they would like Boat. We have Sundering Titan, if they'd like that. We have... Worm Coil's pretty good. Worm Coil, make something so that Liliana's Edict effect's not very good here. Cracks a map. I don't think we have an out here. Worm Coil is kind of hard to kill. Another tower here. Couple channelers. Mm -hmm. Let's do Season Pyromancer just to see what we draw. Could draw Land plus Dreadbore, but it's going to be kind of probably not good. You know what? Opponent's taking too long. Concede, I'll just look. We're just going to look and we'll take our two. That wasn't doing it. All right. I'm bringing the Necromantias in. We're getting rid of the Fatal Push pair, Lightning Bolt pair. Yeah, and then they have six damage in play, attack for six, put me to three, down tick, walking ballista, three ping. I don't think that's an out. They 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 run walking ballista. On the play, probably not because you could take a map from them. On the draw, possibly. So you have to 
Consider your two sides. I'm going to take an extra lightning bolt out here. I'm going to take one channeler as well. Chalice wouldn't be bad to, to take as well. Um, matter Reshaper is an okay take. Yeah, there's 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 things for the Inquisition to hit. There's not a lot. You know, if your hand's like Inquisition and that's it, you know, maybe, maybe you don't. But like a hand like this, it's got Inquisition into Thought Seize. So we kind of like this with a backup Blood Moon. We're a little worried because the hand has no fetches here. But these two could slow my opponent down, plus the Blood Moon behind it. So we gotta, gotta try for it, you know. Sometimes, sometimes this is gonna happen. I would say, I would agree, it's a pretty, pretty decent hand, though. Alright, so good example here, Mattery Shaper, Mind Stone. I'll just take the Mind Stone. Um, obviously, Karn can still be played here if I Thought Seize and then Blood Moon. But Mind Stone gives them that colorless mana that, like, Thought Not Seer and uh, Reality Smasher are looking for, so. Power Plant. It's not bad to draw a Swamp here. I'm going to put the Blood Crypt in tapped. Well, Thought Seize. So I'm going to take one of these Karns away. It's a dismember I don't care about. Now we're leaving them with a matter reshaper here. It's okay at this point. I've got a K command. Um, part of me is kind of wanting to play Liliana here. So I can definitely now play a Blood Moon and not be too upset. Because we can fetch here and I'll have all my colors. So let's go ahead and just knock them off of doing anything next turn. Uh, we could K command and make them discard as well. This is kind of interesting. We have Dismember and a Karn in hand. I could play Liliana, Uptick. They just get rid of Dismember. They fetch their land. They get their fourth land. They play Karn. By Upticking, I go to four. I have to lose Bolt because then I K Command. Shoot this and go up, discard, and then Liliana discard. Liliana dies here. They have a Karn. If I shoot this, Liliana doesn't die, but they do have Karn. Activate again. They'll have four mana. Walking Ballista double shoot, and then I have no cards. They have a Karn at one. If I do Liliana and do not uptick here, then I have to shoot this after they play Karn or before. And if I'm not upticking here, then they'll have an extra card, so I can't K-Command plus Liliana to get rid of the card they fetch with Karn. So they're going to go to the three, they'll go to four, and if I shoot this, they go to five. Land, four, Karn, three, back up to four. Discard, discard. I think we're going to just have to trust some things off the top. Liliana uptick here, um, knowing that I'm basically sacrificing Liliana over two turns. The other thing I could do is just down tick here. Didn't really consider the down tick, down tick, and then when Karn does its thing, bolt the Karn. I don't like that now that I'm thinking about it. This this could result in something pretty nasty. But maybe oh, that's uh, that's scary, but Yeah, we'll do the down tick. There's the waste. Now I have the bolt for the Karn when the Karn down ticks here. Probably get a zero drop or whatever. 
Yeah, <laughs> goes up. Get it out of here. Uh, in this case, I'm tempted to just hold for a turn here. I like going up here. I'm a little afraid of Thought Not Seer. And so I guess I go up still and hold on to probably the K command. I can't I can't beat a reality smasher smashing me, so they're holding dismember plus something else. Smasher. Okay. Okay. They're gonna do it again? And they do it again. They just go up. Dread boar one more time. Fatal push is not a dread boar. All right, not much I can do about that at the moment. Yeah, it's it's card number three. They play a land, they go down. One, two, three, four, five, six. This becomes a worm coil. Yeah, they get priority back, so I can't get rid of the card. I'm going to super regret this if I get like a dread bore off the top if I don't do anything here. I could also wait Liliana down, tick, K command, destroy an artifact, and hit Karn for two. I think I have to wait here and just hope it's maybe bolt or fatal push off the top. I'm gonna hold the Verdant Catacombs. I make two dudes. I'm going to Pass and hope they Karn down tick here. I'm not going to worry about the card in hand. Oh gosh, it's Smasher. All right, well, I get to keep Liliana around. Yeah, they've had some pretty nasty hint top decks. I'm going to six. Extra Blood Moon effect is no good here. Five and three here kills. I couldn't beat three Karns, unfortunately. Um, and honestly, what was it? Two of the Karns, they just upticked first instead of down ticking for the Bolt. Uh, you know it's a top deck Karn because they decide I want to keep this and so they go up to Void Bolt instead of going down and trying to grab something. Opponent's got us, though. That's how it's going to end here. 3-2 with the Rakdos mid-range. A 2-3 league, and then into this one, a 3-2 league. So keeping ourselves nice and even across the entire leagues tonight. List does pretty decently. We ran into several Tron matchups this league. Uh, Blood Moon's obviously very good for those. If we keep finding ourselves against Tron rather than the Prowess, which we did get to experience Dragon Claws there, uh, you almost you almost want to just bring in like a Cleansing Wildfire or something like that. That being said, Cleansing Wildfire is popular enough that you're obviously seeing the Eldrazi Tron over just normal Tron because the waste and just ramping to four or five mana is completely fine in that kind of build. List is sweet. Original creator had Hazret and Chandra. I actually like the Dark Confidants. In the control matchup, those felt a lot better than, say, Hazret or Chandra, which is probably just going to be countered because it's at the top end of your curve. And so lowering the curve just slightly there. Uh, they also had four Magmatic Channelers. I took one of those out and put the third Dark Confidant. Need Skelemental. You could play a Skelemental variation of this for sure. 
Um, I, I like I like that it's got interaction and then it's just got like this pretty grindy, grindy mid-range to late game presence. It's pretty good. It's not bad. I do like it. 